What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still, still here in the book of Numbers. Uh, before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul. This first death is just the body. Second death is body and soul destroyed forever if you're not given eternal life. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory, of, the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross so that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind, to, to truly turn to God, to make that move, to give your life to him, to truly turn to him. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that, and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins, ask him to save you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and He will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow Him. The Holy Spirit gives you power, wisdom, and other things. But if you truly believe, and you truly turn to Jesus, turn to God and ask Him to forgive you, He'll forgive you, He'll give you the Holy Spirit, and He will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And now today we're getting into Numbers chapter 20. We're going to see the death of Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, and also the death of Aaron. And also the reason why uh, Moses and Aaron couldn't enter the promised land. Because of the disobedience of Moses at this uh, particular instance. So, Numbers 20. Then the sons of Israel... The whole congregation came to the wilderness of Zin in the first month. And so the wilderness of Zin, we see right here, it's right up here. And one thing, one thing I'll say is, uh, I've been saying in these studies that this is Saudi Arabia, but I was actually wrong. Um, this is actually part of modern day Egypt, but this, this used to be, uh, the Sinai Peninsula. It used to be, uh, considered, let's see. In the classical area, the region was known as the uh, as Arabia Petraea. So, it used to be known as Arabia. And Paul, it says he went to Arabia uh, after he had seen the vision, after he had uh, Jesus had, had appeared to him. Before he went and preached or anything, he went to Arabia. And it's believed that he went to Mount Sinai, but this is actually current, this is actually modern day Egypt is who is in control of that land right now. With Arabia, Saudi Arabia being um, next to it, basically. And this is, uh, here's modern day Israel. This is part of Egypt. Egypt is over here. This is a part of Egypt and over here is Saudi Arabia. And so the wilderness of Zin, so basically they cross the Red Sea this part of the Red Sea, the Gulf of Suez, around around this area, came down to Mount Sinai, then back up here, and so we're here's the wilderness of Zin, and uh, they sent out the spies around this area, 
and um, they came to the wilderness, wilderness of Zin, which is right here at Kadesh, near Kadesh and also near Mount Hor. And so we're going to talk about all both of those in this chapter. Numbers 20. Then the sons of Israel, the whole congregation, came to the wilderness of Zin in the first month. And the people stayed in Kadesh. Or Kadesh. Um, so, we j again, we just saw both of those. Just to look one more time. Right there. And the people stayed at Kadesh. Now Miriam died there and was buried there. At Kadesh. Or the wilderness of Zen, right there in the area. There was no water for the congregation. And they assembled themselves against Moses and Aaron. The people thus contended with Moses and spoke, and spoke, saying, Only if we had perished when our brothers perished before Yahuwah. Speaking about the... Korah and Dathan and Abiram, their people. Why then have you brought Yahuwah's assembly into this wilderness for us and for our beasts to die here? Why have you made us come, come up from Egypt to bring us into this wretched place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vine, vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron came from the presence of the assembly to the doorway of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. Then the glory of Yahuwah appeared to them. And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, and you and your brother Aaron, assemble the congregation and speak to the rock before their eyes, that it may yield its water. You shall thus bring forth water for them out of the rock, and let the congregation and their beasts drink. And so, the first time, this is the second time this has happened, the, the water was brought out of the rock twice. The first time that it happened, Moses was told to strike the rock with, his, uh, with the rod. The second time, he was told to speak to the rock to bring forth the water. And then, as we're going to see here in a minute... Instead of uh, speaking to the rock this time, he struck it again. And uh, that was a sin that caused him to not be able to enter the promised land. And so, real quick, let's talk, talk about the deeper meaning of this. First off, we actually see... Uh, it, might, it might be in the writings of Paul, he said... Um, actually, let me look it up real quick. Let me look it up. Uh, one second. First, uh, here in First Corinthians ten. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and they drank the same spiritual drink, for that they were drinking from a spiritual rock, who followed them, and the rock was Christ. They were drinking from a spiritual rock who followed them, who uh, came afterwards. And that rock was Christ. So, the rock that was struck represents Jesus. He is our rock. Once, I'm going to just look up a couple scriptures right, real quick. Second Samuel 22, verses 2 and 3. He said, Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, 
my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You saved me from violence. And we, there's many scriptures that mention God being our rock. Psalm 62, 6. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. And now, Jesus also mentioned this in the parables here, here in Matthew chapter 7. Starting in verse 24, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on a rock. The house is us. And our foundation needs to be on the rock, on Christ. But this isn't only believing in him, but hearing his words and following him. To believe in him, but to obey him as well. They both go hand in hand. And, uh, but if you hear his words and do not obey them, uh, you're building your house yourself on, on the sand, not on him. He is the rock. He is the rock. He was struck to bring forth the living water, which is the Holy Spirit. And let me just look that scripture up. As well, John Well, first off, John four verses ten and eleven, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who who it is that says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can where can where then do you, do you get that living water? And John seven, starting in verse thirty seven, now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up or stood and cried, cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He is the rock that was struck, that was crucified for our sins, in order to bring forth the living water, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, this happened twice. The, wa the, the water was brought forth from the rock twice. But the second time, so the first time the rock was supposed to be struck, the second time the rock was supposed to be spoken to. And this represents first him being crucified, and then us, instead of re-crucifying him, speaking to him, asking him for forgiveness, Believing in him. The rock was to be struck one time. And let me pull up one other scripture. Here in Hebrews... Hebrews chapter 6, starting in verse 4. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, 
it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since they again crucify to themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. So, this is striking the rock again. Moses struck the rock again instead of speaking to it the second time. And therefore was un unable to enter the promised land. And we read here one more time. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted, tasted of the heavenly gift and been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. That's striking the rock again. And if we fall away, see, if we sin one time, it's, it's not like God won't forgive us. But if we truly fall away and then go back to him again, I mean, uh, God is merciful. God is very merciful, but we cannot test him. We can't play with him. God is very serious. So this is what, you know, this is what this represents. Christ is the rock who was struck for us. He was crucified for us to bring forth that living water, the Holy Spirit, for us, for those who believe. And we, instead of striking a rock again, we're to speak to the rock. We're to believe. And ask him to save us. Ask him to forgive us. But Moses struck the rock. He disobeyed God. And uh, therefore, due to that sin, was unable to enter the promised land. And so that's what we're going to see here in a second. Then the glory of Yahuwah appeared to them. And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, and you and your brother... In you and your brother Aaron assemble the congregation and speak to the rock before their eyes, that it may yield its water. You shall thus bring forth water for them out of the rock, and let the congregation and their beasts drink. So Moses took the rod from before Yahuwah, just as he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock. And he said to them, Listen now, you rebels, shall we bring forth water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with the rod. And water came forth abundantly. And the congregation and their beasts drank. But Yahuwah said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed me. See, I guess it was a lack of faith. You know, if we have faith, the actions are going to follow. Obedience is going to follow with faith. And I believe it was a... It seems there was a lack of faith with Moses that he could just speak to the rock and water come forth. He had trust in the rod. He had trust in the rod rather than trust in God. He had trust that the rod had mir mir miraculous powers, of course, through God, but he didn't have enough faith to just speak to the rock and have it bring forth water. And again, it's uh, it comes down to, to faith. Do we believe? Are we trusting in our anything else but God? Are we trusting that we can just believe, just speak to the rock, and it bring forth the living waters, the Holy Spirit? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with the rod, and water came forth abundantly. And the congregation and their be beasts drank. But Yahuwah said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Those were the waters of Meribah. Because the sons of Israel contended with Yahuwah. And he proved himself holy among them. And Meribah means contention. From Kadesh... Moses then sent, then sent messengers to the king of Edom. And so again, to pull up this uh, 
a map here. So from Kadesh, right here, he sent messengers to the king of Edom. Edom was over here, and this would be modern-day Saudi Arabia. Uh, also, well, modern-day Jordan is close to that. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Edom's over here, and let me, uh, let me just pull up. Well, I had the maps pulled up, but it looks like it closed. Yeah, so it'd be modern day. Well, Edom would be modern day. It's basically modern day Jordan. That's the country of Jordan right there, and Saudi Arabia right here. So actually. Be close to the same area. Of uh, northern Saudi Arabia. Southern Jordan. And Job. Job was an Edomite. It's believed that he was an Edomite king. And. Um, and he lived in. Uh, him and his. Him and. Uh, his friends. Eliphaz and. And the other ones lived in modern day, uh, around the area of modern day Saudi Arabia. So again, Edom is uh, would be the southern part of Jordan, no, maybe northern part of Saudi Arabia current, uh, on the current map. At least at this point, and then Edom was uh, so basically Edom. Edom, Moab, and Ammon, which uh, they they were a little bit north of Edom, and they're all around the area of modern day Jordan, and all are are also representation. I mean, as as well as many countries, representations of the U.S. in end time prophecy. But I'm not going to go down that road right now. From Kadesh, Mo Moses then sent messengers to the king of Edom. Thus, your brother Israel has said. You know all the hardship that has befallen us, that our fathers went down to Egypt, and we stayed in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians treated us and our fathers badly. But when we cried out to Yahuwah, he heard our voice, and he sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now behold, we are in, in Kadesh, at, at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your country, on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your land. We will not pass through field or through vineyard. We will not even drink water from a well. We will go along the king's highway, not turning to the right or to the left until we pass through your territory. Edom, however, said to him, You shall not pass through us, or I will come out with the sword against you. Again the sons of Israel said to him, We will go up by the highway. And if I and my livestock do drink any of your water, then I will pay its price. Only let us pass through on, on feet. Or, or let me only pass through on feet, nothing else. But he said, you shall not pass through. And Edom came out against him with a heavy force and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to allow Israel to pass through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. And so Edom... Is Edom is uh, Esau. That's the descendants of Esau, brother of Jacob. Now when they set out from Kadesh, the sons of Israel, the whole congregation, came to Mount Hor. So, just to look at this map again. So the... From Kadesh over to Mount Hor, but Edom wouldn't let him pass through. And they weren't going into the land of Canaan yet, because it wasn't wasn't the time yet. God had uh, had a specific. Uh, he had said that um, not all the, so basically all the ones twenty years old and upward, at the at the point that he said that. Or twenty years and old and upward, which came out of when they came out of Israel or came out of Egypt, were not going to enter the Promised Land, but their sons and daughters would.
because of their rebellion. And and if you look, I guess this shows the rest of the map where they came up this way along the territory of Edom instead of going through Edom. Came up around the territory of Edom through Moab there and there's Jericho. Right to Jericho and there's Jerusalem right there. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron will be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land which I have given to the sons of Israel because you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. So even Aaron couldn't enter because of uh, the sin of Moses. Take Aaron and his son Eliezer and bring them up to Mount Hor and strip Aaron of his garments and this would be, uh, I don't have it open right now. I can't open it real quick. This would be the, the, the high priest garments, these. So take Aaron and his son Eliezer and bring them up to Mount Hor and strip Aaron of the garments of his garments and put them on his son Eliezer. So Aaron's two remaining sons were Eliezer and Ithamar and Eliezer was the one in charge of the of the holy things of the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread, the, all the rest of the stuff. And uh, Ithamar was in charge of the tabernacle and the, and the rest of that, the actual tabernacle. But Eliezer was made high priest in, in, uh, in place of Aaron. So take Aaron and his son Eliezer and bring them up to Mount Hor and strip Aaron of his garments and put them on his son Eliezer. So Aaron will be gathered to his people and will die there. So Moses did just as Yahuwah had commanded. And they went up to Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. After Moses had stripped Aaron of, stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on his son Eliezer, Aaron died there on the mountaintop. Then Moses and Eliezer came down from the mountain. When all the congregation saw that Aaron had died, all the house of Israel wept for Aaron thirty days. And that's the end of Numbers chapter 20. Again, just to look at this map. That's the edge of modern day, the Sinai Peninsula is actually modern day Egypt, with Israel being up here, Arabia over here, Saudi Arabia over here, modern day Jordan over here. Uh, so they came out of Egypt and actually crossed over here somewhere, so this, that's not exactly correct there. Um, came down to Mount Sinai and back up, and... Kadesh, just where Miriam died, and then they went around here uh, to Mount Hor. That's where Aaron just died. And again, that's the end of Numbers chapter 20. But we have an, uh, an amazing picture of Christ. An, an amazing picture of the Messiah um, with the rock that was struck. And the rock that was supposed to be spoken to afterward. His... Uh, you know, and there's so many types and shadows, so many uh, pictures in the Bible of of Jesus and of his salvation through the stories. And and maybe I'll end up doing a series on some of this stuff. I touch on them in a lot of the in a lot of the studies, but um, there's so many types and shadows. Basically, future events of the Messiah, of his salvation and stuff like that written in into the life of uh, the characters of the Bible that were played out actually in their lives, which are types and shadows uh, of uh, future events. And it's just so incredible. It's impossible that, that it's not from God. It's impossible. Um, but that's the end of Numbers 20. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end. Let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. 
Let's be right with God. Let's overcome all obstacles, overcome all sin. Let's be ready. Let's be right with him. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Let's preach the gospel. Let's stay in the word, stay in prayer. Let's shine his light. And we do that through obedience, through allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, to do whatever God wants us to do. Obedience to him uh, as far as his word and obedience to whatever God is leading us to do as far as his kingdom. Let's shine his light and let's show his love. Love is the most important thing. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not much time left. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus. There's not much time left. That's uh, the end of Numbers 20. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.